Uh. Okay, line saya okay. Ah, uh, okay, sekarang okay ke? Uh, yes, that's it. Clear. Kalau tak clear, just uh, inform eh. Okay, alright. Okay. okay, so the muscular is here, you can see so fully defined inner circular and inner longitudinal here, outer circular and outer longitudinal layers. Okay, so you can look at the arrangement of the muscular is here. So it is actually made up of this simple, made up of this simple, the simple, uh, it is made up of this smooth muscle. Okay. Smooth muscle where you can see the cord screw appearance of this uh, smooth muscle. So, um, the outer part you should have simple squamous epithelium that provides the serosa covering of the oviduct. So, the, the oviduct is actually covered by the serosa, which means the mesosurface just now. It is you, you are going to find simple squamous epithelium, but if not, you there will be no epithelium over there. So this loose connective tissue between serosa and muscle contains many blood vessels and autonomic nerve fibers. So all of these blood vessels and all the fiber, the, the, the nerve fibers is going to be uh, to be uh, seen inside uh, in between the serosa and also the uh, muscularis layer, antara dua layer tu lah. Okay. So okay, uh, you try and achieve sikit je, okay, a little bit only. You have, uh, now we go towards you try wall. Okay, you try wall. Uh, it's a little bit difficult in terms of, uh, in terms of the punya stage ya, yeah? uh, menstruation ke tak menstruate. Okay, so has three major layers basically, perimetrium, myometrium, and endometrium. So the outermost layer is the connective tissue layer, continuous with the ligaments, the broad ligaments, etc. Okay, which is <coughs> adventitious in some area, but largely a serosa covered by mesothelium. So the one that is covered by the um, broad ligament, you'll find uh, appearance of the outer part is going to be a uh, to be lined by mesothelium lah, kalau tak, uh, adventitia only. Okay, so the uh, middle layer is the myometrium, a thick tunic, a highly vascular smooth muscle, and in the innermost layer is the Endometrium, which is made up of the mucosal layer lined by simple columnar epithelium. So if you look here, this is the picture of the endometrial layer. This is the layers of myometrium. Of course, you can see the muscle, just the arteries inside. So the artery is very rich inside the muscle layer, okay? <coughs> and uh, followed by the perimetrium outside, lah. okay? So usually we always uh, focus on the layers of endometrium, where endometrium is actually divided into functional layer and basal layer. Why? Because of the basal layer will stay during menstruation and the functional layer will, will be removed during menstruation. Okay? So perimetrium outer, the an outer serosa called the perimetrium. Okay, so thin outermost layer of the uterus, very thin. Okay, you nampak sini masuk. Saya actually, I don't have the picture of perimetrium because <laughs> the, the, the uterus is actually very big. Sometimes we just cut through the important thing is actually the, the functional and basal layer. Okay, uh, okay, it consists of serosa of connective tissue containing blood, uh, blood leaf vessels, nerves, and sympathetic ganglia. And that is covered by mesothelium of peritoneal cavity. I don't have the picture. But most of the blood vessels is going to stay in this layer. Okay. Blood vessels. So, what is it? All the lymph vessels. Sympathetic ganglia. Okay. So, myometrium is the thickest tunic of the uterus. Okay. It's composed of bundles of smooth muscle. Uh, ramai yang kita keluar masuk, keluar masuk dalam ni. Uh, maybe because of line again. So it's composed of bundles of smooth muscle separated by connective tissue containing many blood vessels. <laughs> so the myometrium is very vascular. If you cut through the myometrium, it will be bleed. It will bleed profusely. <laughs> it's not simple. Lah. Okay. 
So smooth myself from four interwoven poorly defined layers, which means my medium is very, very thick, but they have four layers, but it is interwoven. So it's, you know, <coughs> the uterus is interwoven. Okay, you, you, you know the uterus in the middle, the muscle is the a ridge like this, like this, like this, so it is interwoven in between. So during pregnancy, my matron goes through a period of extensive growth involving both hyperplasia, which means it's going to increase in size, okay, increase in the number of smooth muscle cells, and there will be hypertrophy or increasing in cell size during pregnancy. This is because of the uh, the, the blood vessel also going to be hyper, hypertrophy to increase the blood supply to the uterus and to the fetus. Okay, so the endometrium is the innermost layer. The laminar propria or stromal connective tissue of endometrium contains primary type 3 collagen fibers and abundant of fibroblast and ground substance. A lot of fibroblasts and of course ground substance you can see lah and through this just a simple staining. Its covering simple columnar epithelia has both ciliated and secreted cells just like the uterine tubes. Okay, so the background summer, but they have glands. Okay, okay they, they are still lined by the simple columnar epithelium. Both are actually ciliated and secreted cells, so they are the back cells to that. Okay, the later forming the lining of numerous tubular uterine glands, which benefit the full thickness of the endometrium. So, this is also going to penetrate deeper inside the endometrial wall and forming glands, okay? So, glands is what? Glands is the invagination of the epithelium. So, kita panggil this invagination of this epithelium inside the uterus, kita panggil uterine glands, okay? Uterine glands, okay? Okay, so the endometrium can be subdivided into two zones, the basal layer and also the functional layer. I have mentioned to you just now, you have the endometrium, okay, the basal layer and also the basal layer and also the functionalist layer, okay. Basal layer is adjacent to the, near the myometrium, contains deep or deep basal ends of the uterine glands here, okay. They are the basal end of uterine glands. So, during menstruation, this basal end is going to be left out, okay? Dia takkan degenerate, okay? The base of the uterine glands here, a lot of blood vessels lah. So, the superficial or functional layer of, you panggil sometimes functional is contains more spongy, richer in ground substance. So, the functional layer will undergo uh, profound changes during the menstrual cycle, but basal layer remains relatively unchanged okay okay functional layer okay the functional layer here okay it contains uterine gland that extend it until the base here i uh, extend until the base okay so uh these are the uterine glands tapi the picture here is not that nice uh, this one is better kan uh, it can be repeated all the epithelium here here just like macam to the this is just like a representation okay so it contains a lot of helicon arteries that will provide blood through to the placenta during pregnancy. A lot of helicon arteries. Okay, helix, helix artery. This are the spiral artery. So uh, we'll provide blood to the placenta during pregnancy. So this is a portion of endometrium that will be slough off. Okay, functionally, you need to slough off at the end of each menstrual cycle. Okay. So, which means a menstrual cycle, day one of your menses, uh, you uh, you will have, uh, by the end of the menstrual cycle too, the rest of the functional layer will be slough off, okay? So, site for implantation is the functional layer, okay? Implantation will occur here and will be implanted here. So, laminar functionalists will interact with the tissue of the pelvic embryo to form placenta, okay? So, that is going to be teach by me. In fetal and placenta. Uh, next video. Okay. Okay, basal layer. Okay, this is basal layer. This is the permanent portion of endometrium. It is not going to be slough off. Okay. So, during the menstruation, uh, all of these are three 
we'll actually we'll close up we'll, we'll uh, contract so that it, the bleeding will stop lah okay in base layer you have a lot of straight arteries lah also some part of the spinal arteries okay which provide the oxygen and nutrition to the cell of this layer okay uh, so we go into the uterus, the radio to the uterus. So what is proliferative? Uh, okay, we, we have to touch a little bit on menstrual cycle because I have to teach you uh, a few of the uh, appearance uh, during and um, before menstruation and uh, immediately before menstruation and after menstruation. Uh. So you have proliferative phase, secretory and premenstrual phases in the uterus. So major phases of uterine cycle overlap but produce distinctly different characteristic changes in functional layer with little effect on the basal layer. So functional layer ni akan banyak berubah, okay? The basal layer is going to maintain, alright? So proliferative phase, this is the proliferative phase just now. This is the uh, day 14 is the site uh, is the day of the ovulation. So before day of the ovulation, uh, uterus will be prepared for uh, for a good environment for implantation. Uh. Okay, so it is characterized by re-epitalization of the lining of the endometrium and renewal of the functional layer. Okay, so uh, after day 15, okay, from day 15 to 28, this stage is known as the secretory or luteal phase. Okay, luteal phase, where you can see a lot of corpus luteum here, uh, which is going to uh, maintain the pregnancy, not maintain the pregnancy, which is going to maintain the uterine lining. Okay, pregnancy will occur within 40, 20, 40, 48 hours if there is presence of sperm. Okay, kalau ada sperm baru ada pregnancy, baru ada implantation. Then there will be implantation. But if no, if no pregnancy, no fertilization, it will be maintained by corpus luteum too. <laughs> okay, it's still going to be maintained here. Until, until day 28, baru you ada menstruation. Then you have menstruation. So it's characterized by thickening of the endometrial as a result of edema. And accumulated glycogen secretion of highly core endometrial glands. Okay, so basically it's uh, just a preparation for pregnancy. Okay, you can see the hormones uh, of the progesterone increase here, and mainly actually progesterone is the one that is uh, the main uh, that is going to maintain the corpus luteum, and also that is the one that is responsible for the secretory phase here or the thickening of the endometrial wall okay so we go towards proliferative phase okay the functional layer is still relatively thin the, the, the proliferative phase is just uh after menses now okay after menses okay day one this they will usually start with first day uh you panggil once menses day one menses uh kita kira uh, kita panggil this apa? Menstrual cycle, okay? Menstrual cycle, usually we start day one menses, okay? We start after day one menses. Lepas tu kita kira 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. Okay, 4, 5, 7. 7 days menses, okay? After 7 days menses, let's say 7 days, okay? Menses then, the uterus will start to uh, repair back the, the functional layer of endometrium. Okay? Ni after menses, okay? So it will start to repair back the, the uh, endometrium because the next ovulation cycle will occur on day 14. And uh, this uh, uterus need to be prepared so that it is going to uh, form a suitable area for implantation. Okay, so the proliferative phase, uh, the, the functional layer start to increase in size. Uh. Functionally, it's still relatively thin at this stage. The stroma is more cellular, but the repair is already occur. Okay, so the glands are relatively, uh, are relatively straight, <coughs> narrow and empty. Okay, baru nak tumbuh, pokok baru nak tumbuh. Okay, the trees start to develop lah. Okay, so the glands start to, to grow. Okay, so the endometrial lining is simple. Columnar surface epithelium. So that one is not going to change lah. 
it is still simple column now. So simple uh, spiral arteries here will lengthen. So of course you can't see the spiral arteries inside here. Okay, you can only see the uterine glands. Okay, what uh, you can see here, this is the muscularis layer. This is basal layer. Basal layer, they can, it contains base of the uterine glands. Okay, so the 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 uh, if you cut through, you can only see rounded rounded area. Rounded lumens here. That is the base of the glands. So if you cut through the the, the functionist layer, you can see elongated glands. Okay, but during proliferative phase, the glands still elongated. It's not that thick. So the glands grow, uh, and it become elongated. It's not going to become spiral yet because it's not that thick. Okay. Hello, Sapuni. Hello? Hello? It's happening? Yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's happening. Okay. Boleh saya call apa saya ada kelas sekejap eh? Okay. Oh, apa macam ni? Sorry, sorry student. Saya takut uh, KKM call je sebab saya dalam quarantine kan. Uh, okay. So the functional layer is less heavily cellular. Okay, sorry. This is proliferative phase. So the functional layer is still, uh, glass is still just il nampak elongated. It's just not going to be so packed. Tak packed lagi. Okay, dia, dia panjang macam tu je. Okay, it's just elongated just like this. Okay, once it become uh, into the secretory phase, okay, the functional layer is less heavily cellular and four times thicker than basal layer. You can see here, the basal layer, the, punya, the, the density of the population of the cell in between the glands is higher as compared to the functional layer. Okay, so you, you can see that the basal layer, the punya stain, a little bit darker as compared to the functional layer. And the basal glands here, uh, apa, uh, is actually one, uh, this is one time, this is four times thicker than the basal layer. Okay. Functional layer is less heavily cellular. So you can see the cellular uh, region by looking at just the staining, you can see the population, the density of the cell in between the glands are not that uh, high as compared to basal layer. So tubular glands have wider lumens. Containing secretory product and coil tightly up through the stroma, giving a zigzag or folded appearance. This is because during the secretory phase, okay, where is the secretory phase? This is the secretory phase, okay, which means at this stage, corpus luteum is already given the influence to the uh, the endometrium to be to build up back the functional layer, okay. So once it's built up back the functional layer, it's become thick and thickened, okay. So what happened, the the, uh, the endometrial gland is going to be like zigzag appearance, but just because of too thick, okay, so it's uh, too compact then until it becomes zigzag, okay, that's how you remember, okay, zigzag appearance of the glands, okay, you try glands, because it's very packed already here. So superficially in the functional layer, lacuna are widespread and filled with blood so if they have lacuna in between here uh it will be filled with blood okay that is uh betul -betul, uh, almost near the the, the uh menstrual cycle menses then uh you find the last lacuna will be widespread uh and filled with blood lah. so okay during premenstrual phase okay premenstrual phase dah dekat dekat nak menses okay almost near to the menses there will be constriction of spiral arteries which produce hypoxia that cause swelling and dissolution of the glands. Okay, at this time, spiral artery, okay, the spiral artery, where is the spiral artery just now? Okay, spiral arteries, okay. All of these uh, spiral arteries is going to... Yep, this one. Okay, 
So all these spiral arteries inside dalam dalam gambar ni tak cantik. Which where is the picture? Ah, uh, ah this this spiral artery here. Okay, will yeah, this is this is the spiral artery. Okay, this is the uh pelikan artery again. So it will start to constrict. Okay, mana tadi? Okay here. Okay, so there will be constriction of spiral arteries which produce hypoxia that causes swelling and dissolution of gland. So, bila hypoxic, of course, all the cell will not get, will not going to get any oxygen supply, any nutrition tak ada. So, there is no, no supply. Of course, there will be dissolution of the glands, which means there will be apoptosis. Okay, death of this tissue. So, the stroma of the peripheral functional layer is more compact. And that near the base layer typically appeared more sponge-like during this time of blood stasis. Okay, at this time, all this cell is started to become uh, dead, okay? So, so you can't see clearly the boundary, the, the uterine glands also collapse, okay? Because, because what? The uterine glands, the epithelium also will become, will die, okay? Apoptosis and breakdown of the stroma matrix will occur, and you can see the glands is no more nice, no more zigzag appearance, no more elongated appearance, tak ada dah. No more, okay? So even the, 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 the dissolution of all of these cells. Okay? So defertilization, ni, uh, you can read my own actually. It's not part of this lecture. Uh, I just want to show you how the, uh, fertilization occur. Okay? Uh, macam mana dia masuk ke zona pelucida. Okay, this is the area of the zona pelucida. Okay, you can see... Here is the uh, the apa uh, uh, the ovulation. Eh? Okay, the mature graft and follicles ni start to uh, go towards near the uh, near the the ovary eh? so that uh, the, the near the wall of the ovary so that implant uh, ovulation can occur. Okay, uh, alright. So I think you read this one by your own. Eh? Okay. Ke ada nanti saya kena touch during next lecture tak ada, right? Oh, okay. So, that's all. This this is the, basically the premenstrual phase. But uh, the one that I have, the slide that I have, uh, is already menstrual phase, which means you can only uh, see half part of this functional layer that already dissolved. Lah. That is the one that I have lah, inside our collection. Lah. Okay, so uh, do you want me to explain about this? I don't think we have. Huh? We have. Uh, I think you can just read by your own. Huh? All right. Okay, so the cervix. Okay, cervix is slower and cylindrical part of the uterus, which is also always uh, uh, will be related to the cervical cancer. Yeah? Okay, cervical cancer is quite common cancer. Nowadays, okay, it is because of this the changes of this epithelium. Okay, it differs in histologic structure from from the rest of the uterus, but you can see the inner part is still having uterine glands. Okay, little bit lah. Okay, but you call it as the cervical glands. So the mucosal lining of the endosurfix is mucus secreting simple columnar epithelium. Okay, so the mucosal lining. Of the endocervix, okay, cervix is divided uh, uh, into uh, endocervix and ectocervix, okay. This is the junction, okay, this is the junction. So, the endocervical region here is uh, lined by mucus secreting simple columnar epithelium on a thick lamina propria, lah. okay. Thick lamina propria because at this area, muscle pun tak banyak. The myometria is very few here. Okay, so the, the, the uh, lamina propria will be thick lah. But you can't see from this link. Okay, so the external os, okay, here will, uh, which bulges into the upper part of the vagina. This is the one.
Hello, can you all hear? Can you hear me? Students, hello. Hello. Dr. Dan, we can hear you. <laughs> Sorry. I, I forgot. I thought I, I'm charging my laptop. Rupanya saya tak buka oh, Swiss padam. <laughs> okay. Alright, so if you look at this survey, uh, sir. Dia punya... Okay. All right. So if you look at the cervix here, they have the uh, ectocervix here. This is the endocervix. So uh, the endocervix is still mucus secreting simple columnar epithelium on a thick lamina propria. So the external os here, which bulges into the upper part of vagina, is covered by exocervical mucosa, which has stratified squamous epithelium. So you have a distinct... Uh, Junction uh, here, okay, or transformation zone occur where the simple columnar epithelium undergoes an abrupt transition to stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, so you, uh, this is the um, the appearance inside the cervix. Uh, okay, so you have the okay, the deeper middle layer of cervix has little smooth muscle and consists mainly of dense connective tissue. A little bit of smooth muscle here. You, you can't see that much, but more on towards the dense connective tissue in between. And you have this uh, uh, simple columnar epithelium here. Okay, this is the endocervix. Okay, so um, this is not a good picture too. Okay, so from this trauma, many lymphocytes and other leukocytes penetrate. The stratified epithelium to reinforce local immunity defense against microorganism. So actually, basically, cervix is going to protect your uterus. Okay. Before parturition, the cervix will dilate greatly and soften due to intense collagenolytic activity in the stroma. So that's why uh, you have a lot of connective tissue here rather than muscle. Okay. Because during uh, almost near to delivery, the cervix will be become very big and soft, very fluffy. <laughs> okay. So uh, if you have experienced the uh, when, uh, once you enter the clinical, yes, you you are you are, have to feel the the, the uh, donut like appearance of donut feel like appearance of the cervix. Okay, so this is the actually the junctional zone. This is the endocervix, which is actually lined by the lined by the simple columnar epithelium. Okay, then this is the ectocervix, which is lined by the stratified column uh, sorry stratified squamous non non of a stratified squamous 
35 commas, non keratinize, e non c'è non si lice, ola, non mi manca di silia, 35 commas, non keratinize, ok? So you can see this here are the endometrial, glands ataupun dia pake cervical glands in between. You can see a lot of tissue here, mainly fibroblast, and also very dense connective tissue, but you can see clearly lah, of course, it has to be under very special stain. Okay, what about vagina? Vagina, the word of vagina is the voice of gland. Okay, so where is actually the secretion from the vagina comes from? Okay, the fluid secretion during sexual stimulation is out from the blood plasma that sits through the epithelial lining into the vagina cavity from engorged venous plexus in the lamina propria. And also, mainly the secretions actually came from the, the cervical glands too. Okay. So the wall of the vagina canal consists of three layers of tissue. One is the mucosal layer, which is actually lined by the stratified, uh, stratified squamous epithelium non-keratinized. And this layer is made up of the muscular layer. Okay, and also you have the adamantitia layer because vagina is not covered by the upper, it's not covered by the broad ligament cup upper tada, no. So there is only adventitia outside the vagina. So the mucosal layer is the non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, tak, tak keratinized. Okay, maybe lah nampak sikit tapi it is not keratinized. Okay, stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, cells of this actually contains more amount of keratin. Okay, and a lamina propria of loose connective tissue contains numerous elastic fibers, numerous elastic fiber inside. If you stain special stain, yes, you can find a lot of elastic fibers. Okay, this is important for the irritation that occurs during birth. So you can see uh, delivery of the baby, how big the size of the hip or the baby, how big your baby is, 3.5 kilo is going through the vagina wall. So that's amazing, okay, amazing because of that elastic fibers. If you don't have elastic fibers, then after delivery, the vagina is not going to contract, okay, because there is no elastic fibers, can. All right, so, okay, here, it will be rich. Uh, it is richly vascular, as mentioned above, lubricating fluid that coats vagina during sexual stimulation is derived from blood plasma in these vessels that seeps through the stratified squamous epithelium so you can see this full layer is the just like your skin layers can stratified squamous non-keratinized okay you tak nampak keratin still present of nucleus a lot other pun very small amount okay all right so the muscular layer here have mainly longitudinal bundles of full muscle some circular bundles next to the uh, mucosa layer lah. so you can have the <coughs> Circular uh, bundles here that covers uh, encircles the vagina. Okay, and uh, adventitia, a layer of dense connective tissue that merge surrounding tissues, rich in elastic fibers. So, this is important for the irritation of vagina during birth. And it contains extensive blood vessels, nerve plexus, and nerve cells. I think that's all. Thank you for now. Do you have any more questions? Okay, ada, so ada soalan ke? Kalau tak ada, I think I can stop now recording.